Good morning, everyone. I'm Amanda Doritas, one of your hosts today. Welcome to Corn Live. We're on a mission to bring you current field reports, the latest in technology, and access to agronomic specialists. We want to build on the weekly Corn newsletter articles to drive success in the field. Our plan is to bring you live updates every two weeks. This may be adjusted depending on what's happening in the field, so just keep an eye on the core newsletter for future events. And today we're focusing on refining in-season nitrogen application. We'll get, we'll also get a crop progress update from Molly Karen Ag Center, site of the Farm Science Review. So just a few housekeeping notes before we get to the good stuff. We'll have one hour of nutrient management CCA CEUs, which will be available at the end of the program. This program is being recorded and it will be available on the Agronomic Crops Team YouTube channel afterwards. So please use the Q&A feature uh, to ask questions of our speakers. If you're not as familiar with Zoom, you can find that at the bottom of your screen. So click on that. We do want to hear from you guys. Please ask questions. So with that, I'll kick it over to Mike Eastat to get things started. Thanks, Amanda. Good morning. Corn is currently receiving nitrogen applications in Ohio. So today we want to give you some ideas on how to make the most of your nitrogen dollar. You know, nitrogen is by far the most studied uh, crop nutrient. Its behavior is somewhat unpredictable. Researchers at Ohio State College of Food, Ag, and Environmental Sciences are working to unravel the mystery of how to optimize nitrogen application rates and timing to achieve profitable yields while protecting the waters of Ohio. Today, we have with us Nate Doritas, Operations Manager at the Farm Science Review, and Dr. John Fulton, Professor in the Department of Food, Agricultural, and Biological Engineering, to give us some insight into current application technology and research being done to achieve the most of your nitrogen dollar. So we're gonna cut out and go out to the Farm Science Review and Nate, they're all yours. Good morning and thank you, Mike. Um, thanks for joining us today. And uh, as, as we said, we're gonna give you a quick update here on planning progress, where we're at as far as uh, crop condition and then uh, talk about our nitrogen program. And uh, be sure to um, ask some questions there. We'll get to that at the end and um, be happy to answer anything that uh, may come up there. We, uh, we've got a great season started here at the Molly Karen Ag Center. If you're uh, not familiar with us, we host the Farm Science Review annually. So there's a combination of short season corn and typical fall, uh, full season corn here. And uh, the nitrogen program really remains the same for all those acres. Um, we, uh, we began planting this year with some soybeans early and uh, the, fir the first week of April. And uh, we just finished up with our last soybeans on um, Memorial Day there on, on a couple Mondays ago. Uh, corn, we have most of our demo corn went in the ground uh, April 27th, 28th. We did have some replant that came from that first week of May. May 2nd was a tough day here. That all is coming up. Um, and right now the growth stages on corn across the farm range from about V3, V4, all the way to V6. We have not started side dress today, but here we are the second week of June. Um, looks like we're gonna have a little bit of rain in the forecast, but a good week next week. And we hope to get that side dress application started. Um, really seeing good color in our corn. And I think that comes from a little bit of the, of the heat and the moisture that we've had recently, but certainly our nitrogen program. That program for us is a split application program we, uh, we start with a planter ap ap applied nitrogen. There's a lot of things that go on in that planter pass, but we really feel like nitrogen is pretty, pretty important piece to that. So that's what lays out our base. That, that's a straight rate application. Uh, we use 32 and some, some thiosol there across all those corn acres. Goes to a two by two by two system. And uh, we, we pull a tank behind us to keep the application uh, matched up fairly close with seed loads. So. 
it's not too tough to manage. Uh, we do have to haul some product and haul seed at the same time, but works well for us. Our goal with that planting pass is to have about 50 pounds of nitrogen in place as that corn takes off. That will usually get us through some of these weather events and get us down the road a little bit where we can um, really come up with a nice side dress application. And uh, the timing typically works out well. And uh, again, this year we were we were thinking this week was going to be a really wet, uh, pounding, potentially flooding uh, week of rainfall. And again, we, we've we've managed to miss most of that here, and uh, we should return to the field today. With um, with that side dress application, then we we uh, we're sitting in the toolbar today. A lot of uh, a lot of technology, even on our toolbar. You know, we we feel like that application is just important. With every uh, nitrogen application you can make you know there's a series of uh, positives and negatives that can be listed for for everything and uh, for us the side dress application is a uh, is a wide drop um, application with our side dress applicator v, v6 is a is a where we're at today our window usually opens v5 and runs through v8 v9 and uh, i think we're going to be right in that when we start start this year uh, it, it is a surface application, so uh, we, we use an inhibitor with that. And uh, being banded, I think we're very efficient with the way we can uh, get that nitrogen to the corn crop. It's a really nice handoff from the 50 pounds applied with the planter. And our, uh, our side dress application is a variable rate application. Those are coming currently from granular through the Corteva uh, operation platform. And uh, we sync things through my John Deere, so we're Loading as applied data in, we're pulling the prescriptions out through that. We're sending it right to the tractor, so it's pretty seamless. That uh, that granular Corteva program runs a uh, a simulation with that. Uh, we we pull in weather data, historical um, and current. We have a yield component there, and then we also look at our zones. Our zones are created through a, a combination of things. Um, but when we take them to the field, they they um, They'll generally range, um, you know, between five and 20 gallons compared to a straight rate application. So we really feel like we're gaining some things with that uh, variable rate application at side dress. So you'll, um, again, you'll see the applicator here. We, um, we hope to get out today to get started on some of that. We, um, we do have 32 and thiosol again in the applicator. Um, you know, on a 1600 tank here, I'm covering on average about 40, 45 acres. And um, just looking forward to getting this tool back into the field today. I'm gonna hand, um, hand things off here to John Fulton, but we've got a video that we can, uh, we can play. This walk around video is, is a good, um, just a good summary of what we take to the field when we go side dress again a 40 foot applicator matched up with a 40 foot planter following 40 foot strip till in some cases seven r tractor is set up on 120 inch spacing to match the applicator which really minimizes the amount of turn uh corn that's driven on on the ends when we turn and it also uh, works well with our controlled traffic where we're we're aligned with the pool tank and the sprayer and, and many of our passes A lot of research that gets done here focuses on production practices that we have at Molly Karen, including nitrogen. Long, um, a long-standing relationship with the uh, FABE team here at Ohio State, and some of the recent work looks at uh, not only rates but timing and other things. And uh, we're interested in that just to make sure we're staying current on how we can best get through those uh, these growing season challenges. Uh, we've got a lot of a lot of yield potential out there right now as we start the growing season and a lot of revenue potential here through the 21 and hopefully 22 and beyond. So it's very important to make sure we've got everything we can do there and, um, and uh, you know, be, in, be environmental stewards at the same time. So I'm going to start to hand things off to Dr. John Fulton here and um, he'll, uh, he'll give us an update and we'll talk a little bit about what also occurs uh, in combination with them at Molly Cairn. Good morning, everyone. Like Nate said, really appreciate you guys joining. And um, my name is John Fulton and uh, part of kind of the 
both on extension and research side at Ohio State. And um, anyways, I'm out in uh, one of our cooperator fields and uh, I want to appreciate uh, Brett and Brandon and Dale Kenworthy for working with us. I'll tell you, we're, we're in central Ohio today. We're about 35, 40 miles directly west of uh, where Nate is. And uh, we've received about, uh, in this field, just about an inch and a half roughly over the last couple of days. So we've had a little bit more rain. It's definitely sticky out here as I walk through it. Uh, this corn's at V7 today, uh, walking through it. And uh, it's an irrigated field to give you a little bit of update. So similar, but uh, a little bit different in terms of uh, some of the weather, weather, in particular rain that we've seen uh, and described by Nate. Uh, but uh, I think this, um, Brett told me this uh, uh, field received side dress about a week and a half ago. I think it was last uh, Sunday. Uh, this corn's looking really good at V7 at this stage. Uh, what I would describe as uh, maintaining yield potential for what their goals are uh, across this field. Uh, they did a verberate seeding prescription on this field, uh, ranging anywhere from about 32 to 40,000 seeds. Uh, again, we're irrigated. Uh, and then from a uh, kind of fertility package, uh, they put a little bit of infro. Um, in and then come back, as I mentioned, and side dressed uh, the remaining balance of that nitrogen in, a, in this field. So uh, off to a good start, sufficient rain. Uh, one, a couple of things I would tell you to be thinking about here. Uh, if you haven't side dressed, uh, some points that I would make uh, working with Nate, and we'll get to some of the project and project results here in a second. Uh, but uh, we've been using uh, MRTN. It's kind of a um, early, you know, prior to the season to estimate how much nitrogen we need, we need to be putting out on these fields. Uh, it kind of gives us a good average and starting point to think through. Uh, the MRTN is, is basically hosted by our Iowa State and it, and it serves as Ohio State's uh, recommendation on nitrogen uh, and corn. Um, so, and that takes in uh, consideration both uh, nitrogen price Okay, and, and, and then also uh, grain pricing. So you can add both of those into the formula and it kicks out basically an estimated average uh, profitable uh, rate, but also gives you a range. And so for example, uh, one of Nate's fields we ran through uh, for the year, uh, commodity prices were up uh, and using the local uh, nitrogen prices that Nate was using, I think in his field, we ended up putting 205 total pounds of nitrogen in that field for this year. Go back last year, uh, same thing. We ran it through and a uh, similar field or adjacent field there at the Molly Karen, we were at 170 and I think ranging from 155 to what it predicted about 190 nit uh, pounds of nitrogen. So MRTN kind of serves as our starting point uh, we can talk and, and address how we then take that and, and ultimately decide how we want to apply nitrogen uh, out in the field. Um, as far as this year remaining, just some ideas that I, I would suggest is uh, making sure you've checked your applicator over. Uh, we had an instance uh, last week, uh, we uh, had to redo one of the row units on side dress, just, you know, uh, it sat over the year we uh, checked and uh, replacing orifices and a, and a, and a line on it uh, to address one of uh, basically a reduced flow. So making sure you check that before you get out in the field if you haven't done so already. Uh, for those of you that have already side dressed and are sitting here, um, I'd encourage you to kind of make sure you're scouting your fields. Um, I know Brett and, and me, since we're doing some projects here, we'll, we'll get out here and look through the field. But just because we put nitrogen out, and things are looking good. We like to, to kind of, at least from my my perspective, some some ideas that uh, we go through. First of all, we check all of our as applied maps. Uh, we uh, we go to the field and have an attention, especially at side dress. We'll say put a put 130, 150 pounds out. Uh, we come back and we check all of our side uh, all of our as applied maps just to kind of get an assessment and verify we got out there and did what we thought we were going to do, and that we didn't have any areas of skips or uh, any issues that might have came up on there uh, that we need want to be uh, noting as we go through the field. Uh, if we find some some things that may have happened as we get out there, we we like to go to those areas and check to make sure uh, we you know kind of monitor through the season. Um, 
other things that we we kind of go forward with is again we we not only look at verify the quality of the application uh we've been using remote sensing and, and I will, i'll ask nate one of the first questions talk a little bit about his remote sensing and how he uses it to verify and kind of track his progress especially on the nitrogen but we use uh imagery there's several companies out there but we look at uh visible imagery ndvi uh in particular after application and, and over the next few months to, to make sure that uh, what we went out and plan as a nitrogen, there wasn't any issues. Um, and so at times, you know, they sometimes can expose uh, either an applicator issue, or in this case, we are being getting plenty of rain. Uh, it identifies and, and, and maybe think about adding a little bit more nitrogen. Um, right now, uh, folks that I've been working with we, we don't have plans to go back out and put any nitrogen on, but with the plenty of rain, you know, some of these spots might be a little deficient in nitrogen. Uh, with So uh, we've got the capacity, and at least in our area, to use some high clearance sprayers uh, equipped either with wide drops or, or drop down tubes to, to go back in and address that uh, if that comes up. Uh, so that's one thing I would add in as we scout and we think ahead. Uh, with this rain and we're expecting rain here possibly over the next two days we don't know how much that it's kind of variable uh but uh we we, we do kind of scout and, and think ahead that maybe we have to come back and shoot some nitrogen in a little bit later we call that a rescue type application not a late season but a rescue where you know uh just need a little nitrogen to get through tasslin and, and not to have a, a yield hit so again we evaluate those using the imagery and on the ground scouting uh, to make those kinds of decisions. So uh, kind of going back to some of the projects, I'd encourage you if you're really interested in rate and timing, uh, since 2007 in our eFields books, there's been several projects highlighting those. Uh, we've done some, some work. Uh, I'd highlight in the 2019 eFields, we looked at a three-year study uh, over around South Charleston, looking at uh, uh, placement where we were using wide drops, colders, and then drop tubes, which, um, you know, drop tubes would just be basically a, a surface application dropping nitrogen right down the center or between the rows uh, on the surface. Wide drops, as Nate said, you're going to be putting that right beside the plants. Uh, Nutriboss is another system out there very similar, but you're actually applying that nitrogen at the roots. Um, and then, of course, the colder system, like uh, a lot of side dress units use a colder uh, and then we're kind of injecting that roughly about two inches deep uh, so we're getting that placed subsurfacely so uh, but we those results were uh, three years uh, out of that you know we didn't see a distinct or significant difference between the wide drops and colders in that uh, but the the wide drops and colders were significantly different uh, than uh, the drop tube in, in those in that study uh, we actually had some reduced yield uh, when we went to the drop tubes and just placing it on the surface between those rows. So just some things to think about on that. Uh, other things that we've looked at and, and we're working with Nate uh, and, and we're kind of in the second year, but uh, we've been, really been looking at uh, timing of nitrogen. And one of the, the things that uh, we're looking ahead about is, you know, with some of the environmental concerns and as we move ahead and potentially look at what situations we might be uh, served as, as farmers or consultants that are um, kind of providing recommendations to farmers, you know, is there going to be a scenario in the future where um, similar to what we see with water in other states that we only have so much nitrogen. We're given X amount of units of nitrogen uh, to put out on a cornfield and, and we're basically looking and, and looking at strategies of if I'm given X amount, um, let's say 170 pounds, what is my, my, uh, most efficient applications to ensure that that's up to uh, by these corn plants. So uh, just something to kind of think about, but at the same time, I can tell you, and, and, and Nate can chime in here once I'm done, that we've already learned quite a bit out, of, I think out of year one, if not, you know, in prior years, some of the work we're doing. But uh, uh, last year, we, we, as I mentioned, we had about 175 units, uh, give or take, if I remember, that we could apply. We split those rates. Uh, some of that was all at planning. Uh, and then there was a ratio of uh, about 30 pounds, 50 pounds, and 90 pounds at planning. And then the remaining balance of that 170 was done as side dress. 
Uh, and then we had a zero check out there just to kind of evaluate what Mother Nature uh, provided us, uh, both for the uh, soil mineralization as far as providing nitrogen. Uh, that is all reported in our 2020 E fields. Um, and uh, from that, basically what we saw is definitely split applications pay. Uh, the trend in that study said that uh, the we, we could get by with about 30 pounds. Uh, I would suggest 30 to 50 pounds <clears throat> is needed up front to get you in the side dress or later in terms of applying in. But the trend was put some down with the planter and then come back. And a little bit the trend is we saw higher yield uh, as we put more down at side dress. Okay, so, but when we came back and we put everything down, uh, there's 170 some units at side dress that definitely uh, uh, had a lower yield than, than, than those that got planting plus side dress. So just some thoughts there. We're going to continue to investigate that. We've continued that study into to 2021 here with Nate. Uh, we upped the, the rate, as I mentioned, MRTN uh, said we were around 205 was our economical nitrogen rate for this coming year. Uh, we kind of stuck around that. And as Nate mentioned, uh, we haven't, or he hasn't put the, the uh, side dress that field, but uh, we'll be, he'll be doing that here in the new future. So uh, with that, um, Mary, I'll turn it back over to you, but I would ask Nate uh, two questions, if he could describe what the control system on his side dress unit is, and secondly, how he's using some of the imagery to verify and use that as part of his nitrogen program. John? Um... Yeah, like as you can see, there's a lot of neat things that go on between um, the different departments and groups here. And we're um, always interested in learning, um, you know, what the next thing may be for us and to help validate what we're currently doing. And as John mentioned, efficiency is one of them. Uh, we, we have learned that um, every time we make a, a, a second application versus a single shot application of nitrogen, we are more efficient, which um, it certainly helps us pr proves the system that we have in place and um, we've done as many as three and four applications here once we we kind of maximize at about two but occasionally from time to time a third which would normally be a late season application um, ca can provide a little bit additional efficiency but for us two applications seems to work really well um, John John had asked me to comment here about the side dress applicator and um, that applicator itself is a uh, is really a fairly simple setup with some current technology there. We um, we again are running this all through John Deere equipment, so it's got a John Deere Ray Controller 2000. That Ray Controller 2000 in this instance is only controlling Ron one product, but remember it can it can control multiple products at the same time. Uh, it's the same setup we use on our planner to control up to three different products. Um, but it's a simple hydraulic pump, so the hydraulic pump is running. Um, we've got a set of valves that uh, call for section control. We split it up through a Wilger flow divider. Those go to each row. And then we are, instead of running a silver disc orifice, um, we're running a pair at each Y drop split, a pair of variable rate nozzles. Um, those give us some flexible range and speed, but also uh, the opportunity to, to do a, a quite a bit of rate range on our variable rate application. From a remote sensing standpoint, um, we've been exposed to a lot of tools through different partnerships, and uh, we continue to use some man flight and drone uh, application uh, remote sensing. Um, you know, those provide an opportunity to not only create, but validate some of your zones. Uh, there's opportunity to take those to side dress or late season applications of nitrogen, and I would encourage you to look into those. You know, a lot of times they work from a vegetative standpoint. So John mentioned AD, ADVI or NDVI. It's looking at the robustness, the health, the color, the, the height of the corn and different spaces there. And, and uh, we, we've learned there's opportunity there to uh, create your, your variable rate script right from that and assign different rates depending on what your program may be. Um, at the same time, we use it to validate some of the, uh, the differences in application. We mentioned the, the split shot here uh, from two applications in nitrogen. And as we get into side dress, we'll look at some of those uh, timed around that to see if the corn is really stressing or hungry for that nitrogen. And a lot of times we'll see that in a lower plant height than an off color green compared to the rest of the field that was all planted at the same time, same hybrid. And, um, you know, it, it helps validate that. I'll encourage you that if you're doing some nitrogen studies at home to always leave a zero check. 
those zero checks will validate how much nitrogen, if any, um, comes from soil mineralization and the growing season itself. So uh, we've learned that we can get up to 120 pounds from a zero check and uh, not something you want to rely on. But again, it's, it's uh, in some years, it can be a, a useful piece to that nitrogen summary when you look at what you want to do differently next year. So I'll turn things back and uh, we're happy to answer some questions here. And I um, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Nate and John, for the updates. We got a few questions that came in already. Uh, this they want to continue that variable rate application uh, formula. How do you come up with that prescription? Uh, do you consider other things like soil type or CEC or yield goals? Or are you mainly using like that imagery to kind of make those prescriptions for your nitrogen application? Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, uh, for, for us with our uh, with the program that we have going currently with granular, which is very similar to a lot of other programs out there. Um, we use a combination of historical yield that's fed into that uh, platform, um, really good quality yield data. Um, there's some um, imagery that's brought into there to look at how those zones um, grow and vegetate throughout, throughout the year. Um, there's a grower index that also combines uh, a few things, including soil sergo, which is, a, is a, about the, the most accurate soil type distribution we have as far as looking at soil type maps. Um, so with those, some of those characteristics like organic matter are going to be brought into that uh, platform. So we feel that uh, that's a really good way to do some zone delineation. And then we can fine tune those a little bit. Um, sometimes they get fairly small um, with the amount of rates that we want to take to the field. So rather than take 20 zone independent rates to the field, we may only take five. And uh, that's just kind of a way we can fine tune field by field. We'll apply our nitrogen rate for the year across that. Um, as John mentioned, what, what generally comes from an MRTN scenario. And, um, you know, we get a distribution of, of that average rate across the field. So we may not necessarily take uh, more or less nitrogen versus a um, straight rate application, but we feel like we're putting it in the best place to get our return on investment in those zones. Thanks, Nate. Uh, I don't, Bob or John or Nate, if you guys want to jump in on this, we had a question about using the same applicator uh, for a late season or a rescue treatment. Is this toolbar able to be used for that or do we have to use a different uh, piece of equipment to get that late season or a rescue treatment applied? Yeah, I'll let John comment, but this this one, while it is a, a, a wide drop uh, set up from 360 Yield Center, it is specific to the side, side dress application. So it's only uh, long enough um, to get above the canopy height that your applicator would be. So about V10 is the highest corn I've ever been in because I start to run in issues with the tractor power unit and uh, occasionally then the bar. John, John can mention here a little bit about what's required for that late season application. Yeah, so, you know, I'd say, as Nate mentioned, he's kind of limited um, to kind of that V8, maybe V9, probably in that about right, Nate, on, on that particular setup in terms of clearance. So for late season, for us, we normally define a late season as kind of a V14 and after. Um, and to make those kind of applications, you're going to need a high clearance machine. Uh, any kind of, typically we're talking a, a sprayer frame machine. Uh, I would note that if you're interested in doing that, uh, that all these sprayers have a little bit different clearance. Uh, clearance becomes important. Just in like Nate's case, he can go you know, V8, V9 and not have an issue. Uh, but from what we found, uh, you know, uh, some of these sprayers are got 72 plus inches of clearance and to make that late season and, and not have any damage and, and be able to have some, not only clearance, but ability to see uh, the higher you are, the better it is. I'll say it that way. So um, we've got some information I can pass along to folks if they're interested in seeing some of those uh, clearance. Uh, we put together a, a summary of that pretty quick across the board of how, how what the at least coming out of the, the factory, what the clearance is, if people want to see that. Uh, in general, the, uh, some of those higher clearance machines, what I call the 72 plus machines, uh, you can run those machines pretty effectively. And uh, a lot of most of uh, our, our hybrids here that grown in Ohio up through the R, if not beyond the R stage, if you're in the, the late season type work. 
Um, Will, I would mention, and we haven't brought up on this, that you see some mid-season, uh, some areas of hire using a mid-season application. I define a mid-season somewhere between a V6 to around a V10 type application. Uh, some of these, again, we're talking normally a higher clearance machine. You'll take a John Deere sprayer or uh, an Ag Chem type sprayer with a, a, a new leader bed on it. And, and you see guys using urea as more of a mid-season in some areas. Uh, very accessible, uh, being very productive. Again, waiting later in the season to kind of see what Mother Nature's given up to that point. Uh, and you can maybe even alter your rates based on that. Uh, things are going pretty good. You might throw a little more out. If it's uh, been dry and stuff, you know, you may maintain or, or even drop rates depending on what's happening. So uh, there's three things there. There's kind of the, the side dress, the mid-season. A lot of the mid-season I see being done is with urea and then to the late season. Uh, most likely we're going to go back to kind of a liquid product because of the high clearance uh, and, and a tank configuration on that. Thanks, John. Uh, we got another question kind of talking about the E-field study you alluded to earlier. Uh, would you consider alternating Y drops and colors on every other row of your applicator to get some surface application next to the plant, but then also get some of that nitrogen incorporated between the row? Is that a, asking about side dress? Yes. Um, you know, you could. I, I don't, you know, that's one thing we have not studied. So uh, we don't have any any data necessarily on it, but uh, definitely uh, that would be an option to 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 have some subsurface application in conjunction with laying some nitrogen right along uh, with it. Um, you know, uh, I would encourage uh, if you're going to do that, make sure you get everything orifice correctly to make sure it's uniform across that applicator. Uh, most likely that would be done, uh, but that could be an option and, and something be uh, interesting to see because. Uh, Again, I think as we look ahead, you know, not only is timing and we think about efficiency that's mentioned this morning, but rate uh, is becoming important here in the state of Ohio. And we want to be as efficient in terms of getting that nitrogen uptake by our plants as, as possible. Uh, I would note, you know, doing some work with Nate and some others that uh, we've been able to fly, you know, a nitrogen use efficiency. We can, if done and, 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 and really paying attention, we've had nitrogen use efficiencies growing 200 plus bushel corn easily and being, you know, 0 0.6, the, uh, under 0.7, you know, pounds applied per bushel grown out there. So we can do it. On average, we're around 0.9 to 0.95 here in the state of Ohio, what's applied versus what's produced uh, in terms of applied in pounds per bushel uh, produced. So just something to be thinking about. As for that, uh, John, you're in a irrigation uh, field. Today. I've got a question here. You know, those of you doing any work on irrigation and irrigation timing, uh, when you're looking at spoon nitrogen through fertigation, um, is that something you guys consider, or is, are you concerned about you know flushing that nitrogen through the system and out of the root zone if you're applying it that fashion? Yeah. So I guess I'm going to speak for folks like you, Will. We have uh, uh, we have several of our uh, educators and, and specialists doing some irrigation. Uh, of course, irrigation is not uh, significant here in the state of Ohio, but recently we've seen some pivots go in uh, in some areas. So it's, you know, it, it's kind of growing, uh, but we are doing some work. And I would tell most of you that primarily that work has been somewhat on the scheduling front, but we have not looked at uh, using pivots at least yet of delivering or spoon feeding the crop by putting some uh, nitrogen through it. Uh, that is definitely an interest, uh, especially as we have that capabilities at hand is, is putting an injector on the, on a pivot and, and thinking about delivering nitrogen. Uh, it's, a, it's a concept that uh, you see some value in other states that have done that, uh, but also there's a management component to that. I would note to everyone that there's some time and, and you gotta be kind of on top of your game to make that work and be, and, and, and maximize your output to that. So uh, just to that point, uh, again, working with the Ken release, uh, they, this, this field that I'm standing in is actually uh, uh, irrigated. And I would tell you that just right there, we're, we're using some soil moisture sensors. Uh, in fact, we've got three placed in this field. There's an adjacent field that they're uh, growing soybeans in this year that's got three. Uh, and we've kind of zoned the field out uh, for our research here. So basically what I mean by zone now, going back to 
basically we look at productivity of the field. Uh, we place a center and uh, we place a sensor in a high productivity zone, a kind of medium productivity zone in a low productivity zone. Uh, this is actually a, a sensor from CropX who, who purchased actually crop metrics. If you read that on the box, it's really CropX. Uh, and we're, we're sensing moisture. You can barely see the, the sensor there popping up out of the, about a meter or three foot into the ground. There's nine sensors along that pole. Uh, and a nice thing talking about nitrogen and, and water um, uptake, uh, we place that in the row. And, uh, and, and I know Brett uh, monitors that and uses that as a decision tool uh, to when he wants to schedule his irrigation for this field. And to that point, uh, what we have found with Brett work, you know, is that he's about two days ahead of where he normally would if he didn't have that data in hand in terms of what's going on below the surface. He's looking at the soil moisture profile and trying to keep that full. Uh, granted, we get dry and we're running in deficit a lot of times, but in terms of just keeping it running, it's, it's a great tool to have feedback uh, to, to those that are already doing pivots. If you're, if you're thinking about you doing irrigation, I would encourage you to consider trying to throw a moisture sensor, at least one in the field. Again, you'll, you'll be surprised what it shows you. And from a nitrogen perspective, I'll tell you right now, we, we can look at that profile and we can actually see that uptake of not only moisture, but in case of kind of nitrogen, we can really watch that plant and the health of those plants because of uh, you can almost see the depth of rooting on these sensors and uh, kind of monitor that. Again, it's just more information to, uh, to give you when you think about water uptake and, and nitrogen uptake uh, during the growing season and, and and scouting and seeing the crop, the, the health of the crop. Again, John, that's, you know, the fertigation, some of the stuff the growers I work with a lot of since that late season, they're trying to figure out, do I need more? How much is still there? Maybe they're trying to make a small application, but like you alluded to, you know, can you get enough on? What's the right rate? You know, how timely is it? Because, uh, you know, you're kind of limited with how much you can put on at a time using something like that. Uh, we don't have any more questions right now. Uh, Nate or John, do you guys want to add any more comments or anything or? Uh, any other further updates on what, what you got going on currently? No, I just encourage everyone, um, you know, we're in a, we're in a state, uh, we're under scrutiny. I mean, right now we talk a lot of phosphorus, but nitrogen's right there with us, you know, in terms of uh, concern from the public at least. And I think when we think about how we, 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 we deliver nitrogen to, to specifically our corn split applications, potentially using variable rate, uh, but just, just really sound scouting. I encourage everyone to take some time to, to kind of verify that they got their nitrogen out, scout thereafter, making sure that you're you're happy with your program. Uh, and and again, um, you know, we're available. I think anyone on this call and several educators and specialists, if you're interested in thinking about maybe fine tuning rate and timing or doing a project, get with us. I mean, we're um, you know, not only are we reporting that in e-fields, but uh, there's been a, quite a bit of learning that we've done here in the last four or five years as related to nitrogen and uh, thinking about what works best for your, what's your farm. Uh, but that starts, you know, now in my, my book in terms of having a good scouting plan here to get through the season. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just add a few, few summary uh, comments there as well um, to complement what John said. We, we have learned a lot over the last uh, even five years here with our nitrogen program, and we just always need to learn what's what's current and how we can adapt. Um, we, we've done a lot to get to what what we hope to maintain a, a 0.8 NUE, like John mentioned, and um, I think we're we're doing that um, not only with our planter applied nitrogen, but um, the, the variable rate scripts that we're using and. We've seen programs come out there um, that incentivize variable rate on nutrients, uh, and specifically nitrogen. And if you haven't done that in a while or evaluated that, it's really not as difficult as it used to be. There's a lot of tools out there now with the equipment that we have that may already be ready for it. So visit with your equipment providers, visit with your agronomists and your um, the companies you're working with to handle your soil sampling and things like that. They will help you um, with tools that are available and the equipment that's on your farm already to create a strategy to do some variable rate nitrogen, even if you're just starting field by field. But it's it's really um, it's really not as difficult as it used to be. We, we just the, the technology has really come a long way, it really makes it easier from a grower's perspective and, um, you know, just e even getting things into the applicator 
uh, to take to the field are, are much simpler than they used to be. So don't be afraid to try something. And um, like, like John said, just always reach out. Uh, you're welcome to follow along some of the other videos that we post here at Farm Science Review. And uh, love to see it to show where you can look at live demonstrations, talk to all the people through these teams one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and uh, hope, to, hope to talk to you later. Thanks to Nate and John for joining us today. It's really nice to have um, your insight and to be able to, to hear what you have to say and see where you're at. Um, I wanna thank all of you for joining us also. Our next broadcast is scheduled for uh, Thursday, June 24th at 8 a.m. Um, and you can register at that link right there. We wanna address the issues that you're seeing or thinking about in the field at, at that time. So, um, and in between, we have a couple of corn newsletters coming out too. So when you close out of here today, um, a survey will pop up and give you the opportunity to let us know what you wanna hear about from us in the next couple of weeks, either here or through the corn newsletter. So please do fill that out. Um, it'll only take a couple minutes and it'll help us um, know how to better serve you. So I'll also put that link in the chat for you, um, but it will just pop up when you close out. So we hope to see you in a couple of weeks at our next session.